In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the concept of cells and provide you with some basic kind of background information about cells. Now, so far this semester, we've talked about some kind of basic biochemistry. So if you remember when we um, originally talked about how life is organized, we talked about this kind of hierarchy of organization that starts with atoms. And when atoms are bonded together, they form molecules. When molecules are, born, are bonded together, they form organelles. Organelles can make up cells. Cells can form tissues. Tissues can form organs, which form organ systems. which can form kind of these complex multicellular organisms. And so on and so forth. So we also talked about populations, communities, ecosystems, and the biosphere. Um, but we're just kind of going to stop and kind of focus on these levels here. So um, first, let's take a kind of a closer look at the definition of tissues and organs. And then we're going to work backwards and talk more about cells and organelles. So the definition of a tissue is a group of cells working together to perform a function. An organ is just made up of two or more types of tissues. Working together to perform a function. So before we can understand organ systems and organisms and organs and tissues, we have to kind of go back and talk about the building blocks of these tissues and organs and organ systems, which are the cells. Now, earlier in the semester, we talked about atoms. So we talked about the different elements that make up living things like carbon and hydrogen and nitrogen. Um, and then we talked about molecules, especially the macromolecules. So we talked about carbohydrates and lipids and proteins and nucleic acids. So now we're going to talk about these organelles, which are essentially just made up of molecules put together. And organelles act as kind of like little organs for the cell. So we can call them cellular organs. So they're essentially structures that carry out specific functions for a cell. So later on in this lesson, we are going to introduce some different organelles and talk a little bit about what they do for cells. So these cells, these you know little structures that make up living things, were actually first discovered in the 1600s. But it wasn't until the 1800s that scientists really put together what is called the unified cell theory. And the unified cell theory has three statements to it. The first statement is that all living things are made of cells. Now, some living organisms are made up of single cells, and we call those unicellular. But other organisms are made up of many cells, and we call those multicellular. Multicellular. 
The second statement of the unified cell theory is that the cell is the basic unit of life. And the third statement is that all new cells come from existing cells. So the cells that make up your body originally came from cells that came from your parents. And your parents' cells came from cells from your grandparents. And your grandparents' cells came from cells from your great-grandparents, and so on and so forth. Different cells have different organelles and structures associated with them. But it is important to note that there are four kind of components associated with any cell, regardless of what type of cell it is. So all cells have these four structures. They all have a cell membrane. They all have DNA. Ribosomes. and cytoplasm. You'll learn more about the structure and function of these different structures with a, a later lesson where you look at um, kind of the cell organelles and what they do and where they are and what they're made of. There are two different kind of classes or types of cells, and they vary in their structure and function. So all cells have these four kind of structures or substances associated with them, but there are other organelles and structures and substances that might be found in one type of cell versus another type of cell. So on the next slide, we're going to talk about these two different types of cells and give kind of a brief overview of some of the similarities or more so the differences between them. We now know that there are two kind of types or classes of cells that exist. There are prokaryotes or prokaryotic cells and there are eukaryotes or eukaryotic cells. The fundamental difference between these two types of cells is the presence or absence of a nucleus. So prokaryotes or prokaryotic cells have no nucleus. And you can remember that by remembering that pro rhymes with no. So prokaryotes have no nucleus. Eukaryotes have what we call a true nucleus. And what we mean by a true nucleus is that the nucleus is surrounded by a membrane. So we call this a membrane bound nucleus. And this just means that the nucleus has a membrane surrounding it that separates the stuff inside the nucleus from the stuff outside the nucleus. So you can remember that U rhymes with true. So eukaryotes have a true nucleus, whereas prokaryotes have no nucleus. Now both prokaryotes and eukaryotes do have DNA, and DNA is this genetic material that in eukaryotes is located in the nucleus. But in prokaryotes, they still have that DNA, but the DNA is located in what is called a nucleoid region of the cytoplasm, All right? So both have DNA, but in eukaryotes, the DNA is located in the nucleus. Whereas in prokaryotes, the DNA is located in a nucleoid region in the cytoplasm.
there are other differences between prokaryotes and eukaryotes as well. So prokaryotes or pro, uh, prokaryotic cells tend to be smaller, simpler cells. Eukaryotic cells are larger and more complex. Prokaryotic cells, some examples of prokaryotic or organisms that are made up of prokaryotic cells include bacteria. And these other kind of small single-celled organisms known as archaea. Eukaryotes, some examples include plants, animals, fungi, and protists. With prokaryotic cells, all prokaryotic cells are make up unicellular single-celled organisms. Whereas multicellular and unicellular organisms might be made up of eukaryotic cells. So made up or make up single unicellular or multicellular organisms. And both of these classes have some kind of specialized structures that are found in just one or the other. Um, and we'll, you'll learn more about the specifics of those, but kind of one main difference is that eukaryotic cells have what we call membrane-bound organelles. And these include things like the nucleus, but also things like an endoplasmic reticulum. Golgi apparatus. Mitochondria. And chloroplasts. All right, and prokaryotes do not have these membrane-bound organelles.